Okay, in this problem, they ask us to determine an interval that would capture this percent of the data or this proportion of the data. So the interval involves um, player serve speed. So it says, in 2008, the Australian Open statistician reported that the mean serve speed of the best women players was 100 miles per hour and the standard deviation was 10 miles an hour. It says if nothing is known about the shape of the distribution, given the interval of speeds that will contain the speeds of at least this proportion of serves. So this idea that it says if nothing is known about the shape of the distribution, that's a key phrase that indicates Chebyshev's theorem. Also we have this phrase at least. Remember Chebyshev's theorem tells us the minimum percentage and uses that phrase at least you know, this proportion is within the interval. So they provided the proportion. Uh, they tell us that there's nothing known about the shape of the distribution. So we're thinking Chebyshev's theorem, but the problem is actually going backwards from what we normally do. Normally we're given an interval, and in that interval we find the proportion of data values that are located in that interval. Here we have an opposite problem. We have, you know, this number, 15 over 16, and we're expected to determine the um, interval that would contain that much of the data, at minimum that much of the data. So let's remind ourselves what Chebyshev's theorem says. It says that at least 1 minus 1 over k squared of the data, right, is within the following interval. And that interval is the mean minus k sigma, the mean plus k sigma. So in this interval, basically, in this interval, we know something. We know the mean is 100. We don't know k, but we know the standard deviation is 10. The other side, we know, again, the mean is 100. We don't know k, but we know the standard deviation is 10. So basically, we can determine k, the appropriate k, and that k would come from here. Then we'll be able to answer this question, right? So we need to figure out the k. That's our goal. We know our k, the k that would produce this proportion when we work out this part of the problem, then at that moment we'll be able to plug k in, right? And then we'll get the answer to finish that interval. So unfortunately here, the best way to do this is using algebra. A lot of people are not comfortable with algebra, but um, there really isn't a great way to do this otherwise. Now for this problem, because it's got a simple fraction on the other side, um, you could say, well look, after we work this out using some specific k, we'll end up with 15 over 16. You might, if you're clever, say, well, look at that 16 and say, well, that's the denominator. This number's in the denominator. You might say, you know, what number did they square to get 16? And you would come up with k equals to 4 to do that. Um, however, if this had been given as a decimal or even as a percent, the only way to go about solving it at that point would usually be to use algebra. So the most general technique is to use algebra. We're going to work on this problem using algebra. All right, unfortunately that means we need to bring back some old skills. So let me remind you that when you have an equation that has fractions in it, you need to multiply the entire equation by the LCD. Um, it's not required, but that'll make our life a lot easier. So the LCD here is going to be 16k squared. So the least common denominator is 16k squared. If I multiply every term in this expression or this equation by that 16k squared, I will cancel out my denominators. So let's do that actually. I'm going to rewrite the equation, leaving a little room here so that I can multiply each piece by that 16k squared. All right, so now I'm going to place my 16k squared next to each term. And then we'll cancel accordingly. So the first thing I see is that 16k squared times 1 is 16k squared. But over here I'm able to cancel the k squared and the k squared, giving me minus 16 only. And then over here I can cancel the 16s, giving me 15k squared. And voila, my fraction or my equation is free of fractions at that moment. Now let's carry the work over to the other side over here and continue working on it. So 16k squared minus 16 is equal to 15k squared is where we left off. If I were to add 16 to both sides, of course you will see that I get 16k squared is equal to 15k squared plus 16. Now I will subtract 15k squared from both sides. 
And lastly, you will see at that moment that 16k squared minus 15k squared, that's just 1k squared or k squared, and that is equal to this number 16 on the other side. Now at this moment, I have this expression or this equation that says k squared is equal to 16. I have to solve that for k, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the square root property, which basically says that uh, if I take the square of both sides, I will end up with just k by itself. The rule says, though, when you do that, that you must add a plus or a minus before you take the square root of the other side because we don't know whether the number was negative or positive before we squared it. Once we square it, that won't show up anymore because the number squared will always be positive. A negative number squared ends up being positive, a positive number squared ends up being positive, so we have to add that plus minus to compensate for that unknown thing, right? Well, that's okay. It doesn't really matter for us whether our k is positive or negative. So even though the answer is technically 4 here, plus or minus 4, we can just use k as 4 because um, in our equation, when you square that k as well, it'll end up being positive. Okay, so we'll take the positive 4 and plug it now into our interval, and let's see what that gives us. We will have 100 minus 4 times 10, comma, 100 plus 4 times 10. And so this will give us the final result of 100 minus 40, which of course is 60, and then 100 plus 40, which of course is 140. And that's our final result. We could check this result by taking this 140 and using it to calculate k and confirming that that k is 4. And then you can plug that 4 back into here and see that your fraction becomes 15 over 16. So the interval of 60 miles an hour to 140 miles an hour captures at least 15 over 16 of the surface.